scientists reveal the first real images of Pluto and are left speechless. Pluto might have been officially discovered over 90 years ago, but before its actual discovery, we've gotten glimpses of the planet. In 1915, 15 years before Pluto was officially found, the image of Pluto was first taken by Percival in his desperate search for Planet X. Unfortunately, Percival Lowell never realized he had stumbled upon Pluto as he died just a year after taking the images. The research on the planet has gotten more diverse since then, from initially classifying Pluto as the ninth planet in our solar system, to its demotion to a dwarf planet, and ultimately, our first real look at the dwarf planet. What do these new images add to our previous knowledge of the former planet? Stay tuned as we check out humanity's journey to discovering Pluto. Percival was so obsessed with finding Planet X that he failed to recognize Pluto when it was right in front of him. Aiming the telescope at the sky where Planet X was predicted to be, he took images that contained humanity's first look at Pluto, but most likely didn't see it because Pluto was much fainter than expected. Then he suddenly died the year after before even making this discovery, so the discovery of Pluto had to wait till 1930. And about a decade and a half later, Pluto was officially discovered by Clyde Tombaugh. Tombaugh had taken over from Percival after the expensive legal battle with his widow subsided. He continued the search for Planet X and spent many cold nights in the observatory dome comparing images. And after spending nine long months taking images of the sky in search of the movement of a planet, Eureka, he stumbled on Planet X, AKA Pluto. 49 years later, Pluto's largest moon was discovered and this discovery further broadened our knowledge of the planet. Of course, at the point of Pluto's discovery, it was suspected that the planet was about 10 times smaller than expected. That is, if brightness accounts for size, the brightness of Pluto on the images was a lot dimmer than Percival had predicted, and the discovery of its largest moon shed more light on its mass. And 85 long years after the official discovery of Pluto, the dwarf planet stopped being a blurry globe on the classroom boards, and we saw the new high-resolution pictures that shocked us with their content. You know how fantasy fiction writers never seem to get over their obsession with putting whales in the sky? Turns out that they just might be ahead of the curve. There actually is a whale in the sky, and that whale is on Pluto. It's called the Red Whale, and it might interest you to know what it is and how it came to be since we didn't really know it was there before. No, the Red Whale, also known as Cthulhu Makula, isn't a product of Kelly Robson, and no, it's not an actual animal. The possibility of an Earth whale surviving on Pluto is just as likely as the possibility of dogs learning how to fry eggs. It's basically just a dark region on the surface of the planet that's shaped like a whale. To find the red whale, you'd have to reach Pluto's equator, and you would have way over 2,000 kilometers of dark red dwarf planet to explore. There is still debate on what actually formed the dark mass, but the most likely is that it was produced by the impact of a massive collision. The same collision actually that formed Pluto's largest moon, Charon. It's worthy of note that Cthulhu Makula is characterized by tons of craters. What this means is that the region is billions of years older than the craterless, ice-covered basin that it borders, which itself is one of the youngest features on the planet's surface. How do we know this? Think of it this way, that the red whale has these many craters means that it has undergone a lot of bombardment over the years, a veteran of harder times, if you will. And the place is red for a reason. Unlike Mars, that's red because of the presence of iron in its soil in large quantities, the red whale is red because of the presence of very complex hydrocarbons called tholins, formed from the reaction of UV light with cosmic rays, the same kind that somehow gave the Fantastic Four superpowers. This reaction was replicated by Yasuhito Sakina, a Japanese professor who heated a few organic molecules like formaldehyde and got the same reddish color. The group of organic molecules he heated would have been present on Pluto just after it was formed. It stands to reason that after exposure, they'd have given the red whale its red coloring.
Although we know the red whale faced bombardment that led to the formation of its numerous craters, making it quite old, we have also seen that there are parts of it that aren't as cratered as the rest. We have reason to believe that due to this, those parts of the red whale develop differently and are of different ages. The lesser cratered parts are of course the younger ones, though still not as young as Sputnik Planitia, the bright spot on Pluto that the red whale borders. We'll be getting to that bit in a minute. If you want to have a look at the oldest part of the red whale, you would have to head to the eastern part. The middle part is smoother and is thought to be formed from the activities of, get this, volcanoes that erupt ice and water instead of molten lava. It's younger, but cratered all right. The western part is still not as envisioned as the other parts, but it is thought to be a landscape filled with hills. Earth is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but there is nothing on it like the red whale. Probably aliens on Pluto looking at Earth through their own lenses would find the cluster of tiny lights near the seaboard as interesting as we find their red whale. Now, Pluto might have received a demotion in the past few years, but the planet still has nothing but love for the universe. Yes, we're referring to the heart-shaped region on the planet known as Tombo Regio, named after the very Tombo that discovered Pluto. From an untrained eye, it might seem like Pluto's heart is just a beautiful landscape, when in truth, it actually functions like a heart by assisting in the circulation on the planet. How so? The west lobe of the heart, dubbed Sputnik Planitia, is in control of the planet's winds. The high cliffs on Sputnik Planitia seal the cold air inside the basin where it circulates and increases in strength as it passes through the western region. In essence, Without this region, circulation would not be the same as the faraway planet. Remember the red whale we discussed earlier? It has been found that lightweight materials consisting of nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane from the Sputnik Planitia have been slowly invading the place, even going as far as attempting to subplant the status quo in the oldest part. This goes to show just how powerful the circulation is. You can see that Tombo Regio, like the red whale, is split into different parts, but this time even more functionally and aesthetically. Sputnik Planitia was even once thought to be the product of an extraordinary impact that created a large basin filled with nitrogen snow. Also, consider that it is also one of the youngest geographical environments in our solar system. When we talk about billions and hundreds of millions of years of geographical development, Sputnik Planitia is only about 10 million years old, a large amount of time in comparison with a pesky human's life, but only a fleeting moment in comparison to, say, the iron-rich hills of Australia on Earth, which are thought to be over 4 billion years old. No craters on Sputnik, obviously. And in the southern region of the heart, mountains lay across the surface, snow-capped mountains that look like they belong to Earth However, the similarity doesn't go beyond looks as the snowy tops aren't even made of snow. Rather, they're actually made up of methane frost. Many things make the Trombo region interesting. Apart from the fact that it looks like a heart, people have also pointed out that it looks like a certain Disney character. And guess this character's name? Pluto. Yes, Trombo Regio on the Pluto planet is said to look similar to the Pluto character from the Mickey Mouse stories an incredibly ironic coincidence. This is just one of the many weird coincidences in our universe, and yet scientists are still finding out more.